In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and adoration. We are grateful unto you for this wonderful day. It is difficult to explain what kind of a day is today. But one thing is for sure. It's a special day. The day the Lord God has made for us, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the seventh day, and yet the first Sunday in August, the eighth month, the month of new beginning. And yet, the seventh means completion. And yet, we are in Sunday, the first day. God, we thank you. What a wonderful day and a wonderful moment. When we thought we had finished, you began. And when we began, we knew you would take us through. And so, from beginning of the year to today, we can say, had it not been the Lord. We started with money. Yeah, but it's not everyone that we can see today. But thank you for permitting us to be alive and to see today. It means we have room to develop, room for amendments, room to make things right, to right our wrongs. We thank you for this privilege. We thank you for those who have appointed for today's service, bringing us from far and near. We pray for our brethren who are sick. As we use our sister Becky as point of contact, we pray for any child of God, those we visited in Holland, and any child, any child of God, far and near, who is not feeling fine, including those who still made it to church today. And you could say that I feel some pain. I reduce sickness from over you. I cast out the demons that inflict God's people with pain and sickness from your life. In Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for bringing our sister back from her vacation. And we thank you for adding one more year to the life span of her daughter. We thank you for everything, those who are visiting for the first time and those who are here, those who could not make it, those who've gone to work. We commit all on you, Lord. Yes, we thank you. We pray that you speak to us Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God for today. Today is a special day. And uh, as children of God, we must make, you know, take advantage of things that God is doing. And uh, see to it that we do not miss the mark. Amen. God is busy doing things. But sometimes we do not see. And uh, if you do not see what God is doing, you wallow in frustration. Because you will end up comparing yourselves to others. What you see in people's life, you probably want to have the same thing. And sometimes we lose focus. And for this reason, we miss the mark. Turn to your neighbor and say, focus on God. For your blessings and everything that is called will come from God. Amen. Amen. Last month, we went through a very wonderful team. The team for July was divine. Can somebody tell me divine? Divine, divine exposure and divine expansion. Because there are new people in our midst, and they also have to know what we've been creating. We've gone through divine exposure and divine expansion. Actually, every month there is a team for the month. And this is the direction the church is going. And so if you do not know which direction to go, when you come to church, what we do here is giving you a direction. I don't just come and say anything. I don't just sit down, read the Bible, and come and tell you stories. We see God, he gives us a direction for the year, and we follow. The theme for to, uh, this year, 2022, is divine election. Divine election. And so God is selecting his own. 
God is selecting his own. And we, we have come to understand the word divine simply means God. Everything that has to do with God. And so when we went through divine exposure and expansion, we came to know that when we talk of exposure, we are talking about revealing or making known. And so sometimes you have what it takes, but you are hidden. If you are a child of God, you don't want to be known just because you feel like or others are being known. If you are a child of God, you know that God has a time for your life. And he has planned your life before you were born. They are all written down. And so if you have this understanding, you come to know that everyone has his or her own destiny. And in God, your time may differ from my time. But we must rejoice with those who are rejoicing. And those who are rejoicing must also stand with those who are mourning. Mm -hmm. And so there will be no competition, there will be no jealousy, envious, because we have each one's shoulder to lean on. Amen. Amen. And so as Christians, we have come to know that God has a life for us and has a time for us and has a plan on our hearts. And every day of our lives, God has something to say. Before we go to this month's team, let's read where we landed last Sunday. Psalm 139, verse number 16. And God has a word for all of us. Why do we go to church? We go to church to receive instruction from the Lord. We go to church to have fellowship. Do you know what it means to receive instruction from the Lord? To be taught by God's guidance, his word, his presence. The do's and the don'ts, how to allow yourself to be trained by God. Amen. Amen. And God teaches us. He teaches. Moses said, teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. And when he asked for God's glory, in the book of Exodus also, he said, teach me your ways. Mm -hmm. In his prayer, he said, teach me your ways. And so I will continue to find favor with you. And he also said, teach me your ways. So I will learn wisdom. This is about you and I. If you never knew this, today you must know. Yesterday passed. Maybe you had some slight headache. <laughs> Maybe somebody disappointed you. Maybe things did not go your way. Or maybe things went the way you wanted. You were able to go where you wanted to go. You came back. But I want you to understand, it's not everybody that went and came back. May the Lord help us to understand. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, one of us was speaking to me and said, uh, a brother was coming from Habo. Brother was coming from Habo, where other people in Ghana, Tema Habo, where other people have been going and coming. But he was attacked by armed robbers. Before he got there, someone passed. A man was driving. And this I saw myself <coughs> many years ago. He drove for a distance. He reached a place and there was a very expensive car parked there. Guess what happened? The passenger side in the front, on the front side of the car, 
the door open and hit that expensive car, look at trouble. His car is not expensive. And his car door hit somebody's car. Spoil it. Who is to fix it? All these don't happen just like that. But if you believe in God and you pray, you commit your life into his hand because you have understanding of his word. May certain allude you. May that which is made for God's enemy never find you. Amen. Today you are here. You were somewhere else yesterday or some moments ago. But look at what the Bible says. Your eyes saw me when I was formless. Whilst he was still blood. Blood clot. God saw him. All my days were written in your book. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. Are written and planned. And so if you do not know God, you do things the way you want. But if you know God, you submit your will to his will. Jesus said, when you pray, say, let thy will be done. And not my will. If you say, God, let thy will be done, it means you are exchanging your will, your plan, for God's will and his plan for your life. And he planned your life before you were born. And so he says, all the days, how old are you? From your conception till today. And how many years left for you to live on earth? Are all written down in God's book. He has an agenda over your heart and for your life. And if you are not godly, you are not a Christian, how do you find out if you don't read the Bible? You call yourself a Christian, you don't read the Bible. How do you find out? It's written in God's book. And the book of God that he has made known to humanity is the Bible. Amen. Amen. Don't we write words in book? And so all the days written in the book. And so the book we are talking about is God's word. Amen. Amen. There is God's word for your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's a high time we found out these. Let's find out about these. I have taught all these. Your life is a scripture. This, that, 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 that. I have taught everything God wants me as a man of God to teach you. And we are still bidding it up. Amen. Amen. Before one of them, a single one of them began, they were written down. And so tomorrow, turn to your neighbor and say, your tomorrow is written down. And my tomorrow is written down. If you can't find confidence to speak, no. But well, I believe you are listening. Amen. Amen. Our days are written down. And so, no, Wahala. If the day of my sister, my brother today, is the joyful day, I should rejoice. I shouldn't be envious. I should be happy. Amen. Amen. And so, God knows when to reveal you. We've seen many things, but one thing I want to add to before we move to this man is if the Bible says your life is planned, Let's go to Romans. Don't forget this one. All the days, all my days were written in your book and planned. All my days. And can you say that to yourself with confidence? All my days. 
I read it in God's book. Hey, God knows my future. He knows my goings and coming. Now and forever. Nothing that is outside God. Nothing that does not have God's signature will ever happen to me. I refuse to accept misfortune. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to speak this way. You have to have faith in God's word. You have to echo it on earth. Because the word is still could be in the realms of the spirit. But now the word has become flesh. It has come to dwell among us. You must echo it, reflect it, and then God is manifesting his plan for your life. And so your life has been planned. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Hallelujah. We are blessed. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, do you know? <laughs> we know that. But do you also know? I know, but do you know? If you don't know, <laughs> learn to know today. Because the speaker, Apostle Paul, says persuasively, we know. He Salas asked Peter, all of them who went about bringing the gospel were persuaded. They were convinced of what God's word says and stands for and means. The power! If God has not spoken, do not do anything. But if he has, do exactly. Amen. Amen. I pray your ears will hear his Amen. voice. And I pray your eyes will not deceive you. I pray your ears will not deceive you and you will not read meanings to unnecessary things. Learn to hear his voice. We know it means we are persuaded that all things, God, work together. All things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are part of his plan. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose, according to God's plan. All things. What is all things? The disappointment. The Bible says, and Joseph, a young man, has been loved by his father, received revelations from God through dreams. God revealed to him in Genesis 37 his future. God's plan. We saw from Isaiah 46 verse 10 that God speaks of the end from the beginning. The end, huh? Tomorrow. Ten years to come. 50 years to come, he has spoken about them long ago. And so he revealed to Joseph the latter part of his life. And it was very glorious. He saw all his brethren bowing down to him. And one of the revelation, he did not even see only his brethren. And whoever heard his revelation understood what the dream meant. One of the revelations, he saw also the sun and the moon paying him homage. And when his father heard, his father said, what kind of dream is this? Are you saying I and your mother will also come and serve you, including your brothers? 
They understood. Read Genesis 37 is there. But little did he know and that there were other things that will work together to make it happen. <laughs> Many of the things that worked together were not what he would have embraced or accepted if God had revealed to him. The pit. Potiphar's wife lying against him. Imprisonment. The beating. The Bible says in the book of Psalms and that there were times he was bleeding because of the yoke and the chains that he was, you know, confining. Because he was a prisoner. He bled. Sometimes you have to even urinate on yourself. We weep on yourself. Because if the slave master is not willing and ready to rest, and you are walking, and you feel like doing it, they will not stop for you. He did not have the right to decide what he wanted to do with his life. I pray God speak to you. You have the right to go about. You have the right to do things. And you do not appreciate this. You can even pick grudge of somebody who is just working. Look at the way she is doing her bottles. She is insulting me. And you get angry. Hey! Upon all that God has... Did she create her but us? Mm. It is God that gave her. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, make good use of what you have. Mm. I didn't create myself beautiful. Am I not beautiful? Mm. I'm not, I, am I not beautiful? You are beautiful. Oh, okay. You wanted me to say handsome. I'm also beautiful. <laughs> May the Lord have mercy. So God hid the bitter part, but it was part of the package and the plan mm -hmm. to execute and catapult him to greatness. Mm -hmm. And that which God hides from you is mostly that which will train you and make you become. But you don't want to see, you don't want to hear. And so God knows. And so he will show you the good side. Jesus said to them, let us go to the other side. He did not tell them there will be a storm. He did not tell them because you are going into your life, into your expansion, the devil was opposing you. But whenever you are being opposed and you know you are in the will of God, you are in the plan, Remind God. Talk to God about it. Not to your friend. Not to any human. But to God. Praise the Lord. Check. And so when things are opposite to what you expect from God, it means go on your knees. Pray. Ask God what is about. Last time, a woman got pregnant and she was happy. She had waited for 20 years in marriage. There was no fruit of the womb. And lo and behold, the God who blessed the barren woman with children, not a child, blessed her womb with twins. And the children were just in. And she has not been pregnant before. She did not know what was going on. And she was not feeling fine. She was not on herself. Her husband was sitting there happily. She could eat and she had lost appetite. Her husband could laugh and she could not even join the laughter. The thing is very funny, but she could not laugh. She was crying. And she remembered, <coughs> ah, my husband went to God and asked for this. She went back to God and inquired of the Lord. What is happening to me? And the Lord said to her, What you requested me to do is what I have done. You are pregnant if you do not know. And there are two nations in your womb. One will be greater than the other. One will be physically stronger than the other. 
But the weaker, physically, will be strong mentally than the other. Because of that, the older will serve the younger. So ah, now I understand. So there is already a battle in my womb. Praise the Lord. If you know God has given you what you have, when something goes wrong with it, your health, your work, your marriage, children, whatsoever, go back to God. Because he planned your life. And all that happens about you are written down. Nothing happens in the life of a child of God. Accidentally. Nothing. Amen. For you are not an accident. He said, but they all hate me. It might be your pit. But God wants you to learn something. What are you learning? The divine prescription. What is prescribed? Patience. Love. Forgiveness. Move on. They are all the divine prescriptions for the righteous. Those God has called. He has given them this cheat. God prescription of life. This word. Because last time I was talking with my wife about something and my sister called me from Ghana and was saying the same thing. And I was telling my wife, look at how God works. You know, if we do not learn to forgive people and move on, it makes the blessings of God delays. Do you know why? Because God blesses us to be a blessing. And so, if you cannot forgive, and everyone around you is offending you, then at the end of the day, you are saying, God, I don't need a blessing because when the blessing comes, it's coming not just to make you the best, but for others to get blessed, to know God through you. And God is patient, but you don't have patience. God is forgiving, and you do not re reveal forgiveness. And so you make it difficult for God to bless you. Because when God blesses you, you become like a light. He wants people to come. Abraham! I will bless you to what did God say? I will bless you so you'll be the best. No. To be a blessing. And you and I have come to know God through the lineage of Abraham. Abraham, the only human being God called my friend. He loved the Lord. Hallelujah. At your neighbor and say, learn the ways of God. It might be difficult, but if you have what we are going to share this month, you can emulate Christ. Do you know, God was wondering why a human being even desire to affiliate with Satan? Rather go. I created the flesh. I tested and everything was good. Why is human being behaving this way? He has even forgotten who he is, that he is my image and likeness. And as God, no one has power to rule over you. You subject yourself to creation. And God came to the flesh in the person of Jesus. To walk on earth so we will learn to know how to live our lives on earth. Was Jesus hurt? Yes. Did he fight? No. What did he do? He forgave. Oh, was he the only one who was able to do this? No. There were people who learned to be like him. And when they were killing them, like Stephen, he still prayed, Father, forgive them. Oh, because maybe he was an apostle. No, Stephen was not an apostle. He was a Christian. Okay, maybe uh, that was then. What about now? Even William Tyndall, the first person to translate the Bible from Greek and Hebrew to English. When they were killing him, they killed him here in Europe. He prayed. 
for the king who pronounces judgment, his execution. He prayed. How was he able to do this? That me, that people are not even killing me. They did not even insult me. They did not greet me. I get offended. I want them dead. And he that is being killed, he is still praying that God forgives him. It takes the spirit of God. If you leave carnally, when we pinch you, your spirit does not feel it. It is your flesh. Are you with me? And so may God help us come to the level where he wants us to be. Amen. Divine prescription. Divine prescriptions. If you do not want to be like Christ, then you cannot be where he is. Because how can two work together except they what? Agree. May God help us. And if you do this, you learn in your obscurity where nobody knows you. Go through the problems, the challenges, being offended because the people didn't know you. If you practice what God wanted, wanted you to practice, then a time will come. He will make you great. And the people will know you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. This month, is divine outpouring of the spirit. Amen. So if you can write and show on Bima, some of the things will be considering this month. But of, of course, we cannot do much today. But what we will do, definitely do, is to see the general perspective. Mm -hmm of divine outpouring of the spirit and fresh oil for divine assistance. Divine outpouring. August, the eighth month, divine outpouring of the spirit and fresh oil for divine assistance. Amen. Amen. <laughs> there are nine things we will have to consider this month and I pray I'll be able to go through all of them and if not, we carry them to September, the month of visitation. One. Try to get it and write them all down. Amen. Under divine outpouring of the spirit and fresh oil. The first thing we should consider is the person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. Two. The ministry of the Holy Spirit before man existed. Before man was created. The ministry of the Holy Spirit before man existed. Three. The work of the Spirit in man. The work of the Spirit in man. The work of the spirit in man. Four, the absence of the spirit in man's life. The absence of the spirit in man's life. The absence of the spirit in man's life. Number five, the operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the chosen individual. 
the operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the chosen individuals. The operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the chosen individuals. Number six, the promise to restore the Holy Spirit. The promise to restore the Holy Spirit. The promise to restore the Holy Spirit. Number seven. The way to assess the Holy Spirit into your life. The way to assess the Holy Spirit into your life. Actually, into your life is not part of my nose, but I just put it there. The way to assess the Holy Spirit Number eight, the work, the ways, the operations, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit in man today, the new man. The new creation and or the new generation, the born again. Number eight again. The work, the works, the operations, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In man today, who is man today? The new man, the new creation, and all the new generation, the born again. Pick it up the third time. Number eight, again. The work. The works, the operations, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in man today. The new man, the new creation, and all the new generation, the born again. Between the today and the new man, those behind the computer put hyphen. Make it hyphenated or a dash, rather. The long one, dash. Instead of hyphen, make it a dash. Between today and the new man, we put dash there. Number nine, and the last one. The final role of the Holy Spirit in man. The final role, there is a final role of the Holy Spirit in man. The final role of the Holy Spirit in man. Then you put a dash to resurrect. Or to effect the rapture. To resurrect. And or to effect the rapture. Amen. Amen. 
So these are the nine things we have to learn about the Holy Spirit that the Lord is leading me to teach you. The reason why the church today does not have a base that people can say, I won't be a Christian anymore. It's not because what is happening to them is happening to them alone. The Bible says what you are going through, all the brethren all over the world are going through it. So why is it that you decide to quit God or to quit faith? The reason is lack of the Holy Spirit. The fact that people go to church does not mean they are saved. I pray this teaching will help somebody who loves his life or her life. I have sought the Lord. I have studied. And he has given me these nine things. That if I teach you and you obey, you will receive the Holy Spirit. If you don't have. And may God add his blessings upon you. Yeah. I wrote here NB. The NB actually is not for your writing, but if you can write, you write, because I'm not going to slow down this. The duty and the responsibility of a true man of God, or the call of God by Christ, meaning the fivefold ministry, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. The duty and the responsibility of a man called of God to do his work are these. Listen and listen to it. Before I give you that, let me show you something from the Bible. John 3, 34. John chapter 3, verse 34. You were busy with the computer for other things. No problem. Someone should help us with John 3, 34. Amenes, help us with John 3, 34. Oh, okay. John 3, 3, 34. Oh, oh, 4, 34. Bring it. You are his spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nothing happened for nothing. Go back. 434. Let's take it. It has everything to do with what we are sharing in 34. It says, my food. Jesus is speaking here. When she, uh, he had an encounter with a Samaritan woman. And he was hungry. Physically hungry. Because he Lived as human like you and I, and human beings we get angry. And he sent the twelve, the apostles, to go and buy food. Jesus did not use his position to extort. He gave the money, said, Go and buy food. And when they came, Jesus was not ready to eat. And they were surprised. And Jesus says, my food is to do the will. Do you know the joy we derive in doing the will of God? Seeing you living obedience. Seeing transformations in your life. And seeing the miracles and your testimonies we hear. It's a food to us. If not, we should have stopped doing this. But even if one person's salvation will make multitude of angels rejoice, why don't we stay if one person is willing to hear and obey? I was almost moving the church out end of July. I'm saying it on camera. I wrote a letter to the owners of the building that I'm leaving. I was taking the church out of turnout. 
and the D-Day was end of July. But from what I was seeing, and some of the revelations some of you received, confirming what I was believing God, I said, let me give you at least six more months to see. Because we are here for souls, your soul, not for money. We get satisfied when we see obedience. We don't get satisfied when people come to church and still live anyhow. What is that? Then it's like, our labor is in vain. You go to church, you sat under me for years, and you can still choose money over church, over God. Hey, hey, you don't know the God I brought you here. Because the God I brought to you, he says, anyone who loves a father, a mother, a wife, a husband, children, parents, anyone who loves himself, more than me, do not deserve me. Do not deserve my kingdom. We have nurses, we have other people. Your duty time, we salute it. You must. But if it is not your duty time, it's over time, or they are just calling you, and you have an appointment with God, hey, be afraid. It's an obstruction. Go to any Muslim shop with one million and you are there. He is going out to the mosque. He said, if Allah want me to have this money, you wait. Oh. If the money is not for me, then may Allah be praised. Go. He will lock it and go. Irrespective of buying the entire shop. Why can't Christians do the same thing? Agree to pray for the pastor, the one taking care of your soul. When the time comes and everybody gives excuse, hey, may God have mercy. Hmm. My fault is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish His work. Jesus speaks. Go to Maybe let's start from 30. Then you understand. Let's start from verse 30. And every Christian must do the same. They left the town and made their way to him. Continue. In the meantime, the disciples kept arguing him. Rabbi, eat something. Rabbi! You will faint, or oh, you will faint. Eat something. But he said, I have food to eat that you don't know about. Do you think I don't put my, my family in some kind of insecurity? Yeah, but the love I have for the people of God is the reason why sometimes I'm busy studying. My daughter or any of my children is calling me, I don't even hear. Standing close by, and I can't hear. They leave. Seeing me praying. They go to bed. They wake up, see me praying. For who? But I don't hold the hearts. It's left to every individual to make a decision. God will ask everybody like he said to the rich man. <laughs> he said, allow me, look at 18, allow me to go, verse 16 coming. And tell my brothers, I have some brothers in the world. They are living the same way I'm living. Jesus said, no. So God said, no. 